So purposely in this video, we are going to solve questions on Delta Star Transformation to prepare ourselves for the upcoming mid-semester exams. Now even before we start solving questions, let's do a quick recap on Delta Star Transformation. So Delta Star Transformation is mostly applied to find the total resistance or better still, the equivalent resistance of a circuit in which no two resistors can either be seen to be in series or in parallel. Now in such a situation, it is very important to convert from delta to star or vice versa. And then once this is done, some resistors will automatically be in series or in parallel and hence facilitating the finding of the total resistance or the equivalent resistance of that circuit. So what does a delta network look like? Three resistors are said to be in delta if they are connected end to end. Now when you look at diagram A and then diagram B, you realize that we have three resistors R1, R2 and then R3 and these three resistors are connected end to end in the network. So you look at the network for diagram A and then you realize that the three resistors are all connected end to end. Also for diagram B, you realize that the three resistors are connected end to end. So for delta network, the three resistors involved are connected end to end. Now one important thing you need to take notice of is that delta star transformation only works for three resistors at a time or is basically applied to three resistors at a time. So it is either you transform a delta network which contains three resistors into a star network which will also contain three resistors or vice versa. Now let's move on to diagram C. So for diagram C, that is called a star network simply because the three resistors RA, RB and then RC have a common point of connection. So when three resistors have a common point of connection, then we say that those three resistors are connected in a star network. So having gotten this, how do we transform a delta network to a star network and vice versa? So for this diagram, you realize that we have two networks. We have the inner network, which is a star network, because the three resistors involved have a common point of connection. And then also we have the outer network, which is a delta network, because the three resistors are connected end to end. So how do we convert from delta to star and vice versa? So assuming that we want to convert from delta, which is the outer network, to star, the inner network, we have this to be the symbol for delta, and then that to be the symbol for star. So basically, we are going to find the values of RA, RB, and then RC. So let's start off with RA. So to find the value of RA, we are basically going to multiply the two adjacent resistors, that is R1 and then R2. So we have R1 times R2 divided by the sum of the three outer resistors that make up the delta network. So divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now also for RB, we are going to multiply R2 and then R3, that is the two adjacent resistors. divided by the sum of the three resistors that make up the delta network. So R1 plus R2 plus R3. And then also for RC, we are going to multiply R1 and then R3. And then divide by R1 plus R2 plus R3. So basically this is how to convert from delta to star. Now let's look at the conversion from star to delta. So to convert from star to delta, basically we are going to find the values of R1, R2, and then R3. So for R1, we are going to add these two resistors, that is RA and RB, plus 
the product of these same resistors divided by the third resistor. So for R2, obviously we are going to do the same thing. Now we are going to add these two resistors, that is RA and then RB and then we find their product and then divide by the third resistor in the star network. So that is RC and then for R3, we add these two resistors rb and then rc we find their product and then divide by the third resistor which is ra so this is how to convert from star to delta so having this in mind let's try a few questions so let's take our very first question question one obtain the equivalent resistance at the terminals a b for each of the circuits so we have this to be the first circuit we are going to find the equivalent resistance for this circuit now considering this circuit you realize that no two resistors are either connected in series or in parallel now when you look at this network you realize that this is a delta network simply because all the three resistors are connected end to end now we can transform this delta network to a star network so that at least two resistors will either be in series or in parallel so first of all let's convert this delta network to a star network So we are going to redraw this delta network containing all the three resistors involved. So we have the 10 ohms resistor, 20 ohms resistor, and then the other 10 ohms resistor. And then we have this to be the star network. Now let's call this RA, RB, and then RC. So basically we are going to find the values of RA, RB, and then RC. So to convert from delta to star, that is, let's say for RA, we are going to multiply the two adjacent resistors. So we have 10 times 20 divided by the sum of the three outer resistors that make up the delta network. So we have 10 plus 10 plus 20, which is 40. 10 times 20 is 200. And then 200 divided by 40 is equal to 5. Therefore, we have RA to be 5 ohms. Now let's do the same for RB. So for RB, we are going to multiply 10 by 20, and that is 200, divided by the sum of the three outer resistors, so divided by 40, and then 200 divided by 40 is 5. So we also have RB to be 5 ohms. Now for RC, that's going to be 10 times 10, which is 100 divided by 40 100 divided by 40 is 2.5 so we have 2.5 ohms for rc so these are the values for ra rb and then rc so now let's redraw the circuit we have this to be the two terminals we have this to be the 30 ohms resistor. We have the 10 ohms resistor. That is this 10. And then this 20 here. Now at this point, we are going to connect 
RC and then RB. So we have this to be RC and then this to be RB and then we have this to be RA. So RA is 5 ohms, RB 5 ohms and then RC 2.5 ohms. Now you realize that these two resistors are connected in series because the same current will flow through them. Also, these two resistors are connected in series. Now to find the equivalent resistance of two resistors connected in series, basically we are going to add them. So we have 10 plus 2.5 which is 12.5 and then 20 plus 5 which is 25. So redrawing the circuit again, we have the two terminals A and B. We have the 30 ohms resistor. And then here we are going to have 12.5 in parallel with 25. And then the combination in series with RA, which is 5 ohms. So to find the total resistance or the equivalent resistance for this circuit, we have RAB equals, these two are in parallel, so that is 12.5 parallel 25. And then all of that in series with the 5 ohms, so plus 5. And then all of that in parallel with the 30 ohms resistor. Now 12.5 parallel 25 is 25 over 3 plus 5 or parallel 30. 25 divided by 3 plus 5 gives 40 divided by 3 and then 40 over 3 parallel 30 gives 120 divided by 13. Now we can as well express this in decimal as 9.231 ohms. So we have the total resistance for this circuit to be equal to 9.231 ohms. Now let's move on as we solve the next question. Now let's continue with question 2. So for question 2, we are also going to obtain the equivalent resistance at the terminals AB for this circuit. Now looking at this circuit, we have this to be a delta network and we also have this to be a delta network. Now let's focus on transforming this delta network into a star network so that at least we can have some of the resistors in series or in parallel. So we are going to have this to be the star network from the delta network. So let's redraw this delta network as we transform that to a star network. So we have this to be the 20 ohms resistor, 15 ohms resistor, and then 5 ohms resistor. Let's call this RA, RB, and then RC. So to find the value of RA, it's basically 5 times 15 divided by the sum of the three outer resistors that make up the delta network. So we have 5 plus 15, which is 20. 20 plus 20 is 40. Now 5 times 15 is 75, 
and then 75 divided by 40 is equal to 1.875 so we have ra to be 1.875 ohms also for rb we have 20 times 15 and that is 300 divided by 40 now 300 divided by 40 is 7.5 so that is 7.5 ohms and then for rc 5 times 20 is 100 divided by 40 and that is equal to 2.5 now let's redraw the circuit So we have the 25 ohms here. We have the 10 ohms resistor. So this is the 30 ohms resistor. Now let's introduce the newly formed star network. So at this point, we are going to connect RC. So this is going to be RC. And then we have RB and then RA. So this is RA. RA is 1.875 ohms. We have RB, which is 7.5 ohms. And then RC, 2.5 ohms. Now let's assume that we have current moving in this direction through the 25 ohms resistor. Now at this point, the current is going to divide. So we have part of the current flowing through the 10 ohms resistor and that same current will flow through the 2.5 ohms resistor. Also the current that leaves this junction in this direction will flow through the 30 ohms resistor and then also through the 7.5 ohms resistor so clearly this means that the 10 and 2.5 ohms resistors are connected in series and also the 30 and 7.5 ohms resistors are also connected in series so adding 10 and 2.5 we have 12.5 so 12.5 ohms and then also 30 plus 7.5 we have 37.5 ohms so let's redraw the circuit. We have the terminals A, B. We have this to be the 25 ohms resistor. And then this is the 12.5 ohms resistor. And then also we have that in parallel with the 37.5 ohms resistor and the two in series with the 1.875 ohms resistor so to find the total resistance for this circuit that's going to be 12.5 parallel 37.5 or plus 1.875 and then all of that will be in series with the 25 ohms resistor. So 12.5 parallel 37.5 and then that becomes a single resistor like this. And then you realize that 25, this resistor and then 1.875 are all connected in series. So basically that's what we have here. Now 12.5 parallel 37.5 gives 9.375 plus 1.875 plus 25 now when you add all these three values you have 36.25 therefore the total resistance for this circuit is equal to 36.25 ohms now to the last question. 
Now let's try the last question. We are going to obtain the equivalent resistance at the terminals AB for this circuit. Now looking at this circuit, you realize that there is a delta network here. Now we can transform this delta network into a star network. So if we do that, then at least two of the resistors will either be in series or in parallel. Now let's transform this delta network into star. So we have this to be the delta network. It contains three resistors, 30, 60, and then 10. So we have this to be 30 ohms, 60 ohms, and then 10 ohms. And then we have the star network inside of the delta. So we call this RA, RB, and then RC. So let's find the values of RA, RB, and then RC. So for RA, we are going to multiply these two resistors. So we have 30 times 60 divided by the sum of the three outer resistors. Now 30 plus 10 is 40. 40 plus 60 is 100. 30 times 60 is 1800. 1800 divided by 100. We are left with 18. Therefore we have RA to be 18 ohms. For RB, we have 60 times 10, which is 600, divided by 100, and that is equal to 6. We have 6 ohms for RB. Also for RC, we have 30 times 10, which is 300, divided by 100, and that is equal to 3. Now let's redraw the circuit. So we have this to be the two terminals A and then B. We have the 20 ohms resistor. And then we are going to introduce the star network. So we have this to be RA, RC, and then RB. RB is 6 ohms. RC is 3 ohms and then RA is 18 ohms and then we have this to be the 40 ohms 50 ohms eighty ohms Now let's try to find the total resistance for this circuit. You realize that these two resistors are connected in series because the same current will flow through them. So the equivalent resistance is going to be 56 ohms. These two resistors are also in series and their equivalent is going to be 43 ohms. Now you realize that these two resistors are in parallel and their combination will be in series with the 20 ohms 18 ohms and then 80 ohms resistors so first of all let's resolve 56 parallel 43 so 56 parallel 43 is equal to 24.3232 ohms so that is the value of 56 parallel 43. Now the rest of the resistors are in series. Therefore we have RAB to be equal to 20 plus 18 plus 24.3232 plus 80. 
Now when you add all these values, you are going to get 142.3232. Now leaving this to two decimal places, you have 142.32 ohms. So basically that is going to be the total resistance for this circuit. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and then see you in my next video. Bye-bye.